Okay, in this video, I wanna demonstrate this really great feature of Leica Pro 3 called Render Switch. So what we've done is we've made it so that you can switch from Arnold, Physical, Redshift, and Octane and get the exact same lighting look in all four renderers. So let's just see this in action. Now, of course, you're gonna to have to redo your materials and things like that. It's not a magic bullet, but it is awesome for doing light, uh, li getting light parity across these different renders. Okay, so first thing I wanna do is load up my uh, Light Kit browser, and we're gonna choose one of these presets. I'm gonna choose one uh, that I like. Simple Elegant Studio will work. So I'm gonna go ahead and load that up. Now notice I am in physical. I have physical set as my render. I've got global illumination on, and we'll, we'll go over all the uh, proper render setups for each uh, renderer uh, in other videos. So that is loaded up. Uh, you can tell that our, our light kit studio uh, actually knows that we're in physical. It can sense it, so it's already set it to standard physical. So now if I just grab a render region and draw it over this part of the frame, we get that look. Now that was called simple. Uh, if I could spell... Boom. And there it is right there. Let's just bring that up and hit search again. There it is, and we've got that look. Now, we wanna to switch to a different render, so let's go ahead and turn off our render region, open up our render globals. I'm now gonna to switch to a preset where I have Arnold as my renderer, and I'm gonna close that down. I'm gonna go over to my studio object, and now I'm going to tell it to use Arnold. So once I've told it to use Arnold, now I'm ready to go in and grab an Arnold IPR window and go ahead and start that up. And we have the same look. This was very important to us. We know how many of you are using different renderers and you want to be able to switch from one to the other and have it look very similar. This is why we did this. We made sure that they match as close as we possibly can. All right, so let's go. Let's try the next one. Let's open up our render settings again. This time we're going to use Redshift. So I'm going to make Redshift my renderer. I'm going to make sure that I grab the light kit object and tell it that we're now in Redshift mode. And now we're going to go over to the Redshift tab and grab a red, Redshift render view and we'll go ahead and hit go on that. And it'll take a second to load all the materials and shaders onto your GPU. And boom, same look. That That's actually it's probably one of my favorite, if not my most favorite feature. Okay, and last but not least, let's go ahead and load up Octane. So we've got Octane set up as our renderer here. We've got to go grab our studio object and make sure we tell it to use Octane. And now all we need to do is go over the Octane Live Viewer and let's go ahead and hit go. And it's gonna go ahead and load that into the GPU and it should look fairly close. There is uh, one setting in Octane that uh, You'll, you'll have to know about, and it's sort of a widely known uh, thing that Octane does have, it has a default tint to it. So what I've done here is given it a little bit of blue to balance out its white balance. All right, so we'll just let this load onto the GPU. Let me try clicking this again. Sometimes it just takes a minute. Okay. There we go. So again, we've got uh, a, a really close match across all four renderers. Render switch is real, and uh, I've been using it a lot. I've been going back and forth and trying different presets, and it's been a lot of fun. So uh, make sure you check out some of the more technical videos where we jump into these settings a little bit more deep and show you exactly what's going on. But uh, until next time, I'll catch you around. Okay, so in this video, I'm going to show you the uh, proper way to set up physical to get the exact same look that we're achieving in our uh, Leica Pro 3 browser. So we've got one of our presets loaded up here, and I'm going to go ahead and open up the render settings and just walk you through what's going on here. So, of course, we're using physical. Uh, I'm using a fixed sampler just to make it go faster, but of course, you can use whichever sampler that you want. The most important thing is, is that you do have GI turned on and that your primary and secondary are set to QMC, and you're doing a minimum, uh, or actually, you don't have to do five. You could do less than five. But if you do any less than five, let's say you do one, it's going to look quite a bit different or sorry, two. It's going to look quite a bit different than our preset uh, will look. So it's not going to look exactly the same. In fact, even if you turn off uh, second bounces altogether, it's going to look quite a bit darker. So we do recommend you doing quasi Monte Carlo QMC for both primary and secondary with a diffuse bounce maximum of five to get the exact same look that we're using in our browser. Um, 
of course, you can tweak all of the samples and whatnot, uh, however you feel uh, will achieve the best results. But in a nutshell, this is really how we're achieving that look. And of course, um, you're free to, to tweak these sampler settings as much as you want. So yeah, um, I will see you in the next one. Okay, in this video, I'm going to show you the render settings to get the same sort of look that you see in the Lake Hit Pro browser in Arnold. So uh, pretty simple settings. In fact, uh, let's just jump into our render settings here. And you can see uh, the main ones that you want to make sure that you've got on are the ray depth. So we're doing about five bounces of diffuse. Uh, of course, you can lower that if you want, but if you want to match the exact look that we're doing in the browser, these are the settings you'll want. You want about five uh, diffuse bounces, a couple of spec bounces, and of course, uh, the sampling is all up to you. However you want to clean up your image, I recommend checking out uh, some tutorials that we've got on our YouTube page on setting up Arnold to render cleanly. So really, there's not a whole lot of other settings you need to mess with here. Just want to make sure that you're giving it enough diffuse bounces. If we bring this down to zero, you're going to see the entire thing just looks very flat without any GI. So uh, five is what we use to uh, create all of our thumbnails for all of our presets in the browser. So that's what we recommend you trying. So uh, yeah, I will see you in the next one. Okay, so in this video, I'm going to give you a quick walkthrough on the render settings we've used for all of our uh, Octane presets. So it's not important that you use these exact settings, but in case you load up a scene, a preset from the uh, browser and it doesn't match, this might be why. So let's go ahead and launch our live viewer and we'll go ahead and start this up. And you also want to make sure that using the absolute latest version of Octane, latest supported version. And we're going to let that load up. And while that's loading up, I'm going to open up the, uh, the render settings. So uh, the most important thing is that you're going to want to make sure that you're using a path tracing kernel and that your diffuse and spec depth should be at least five. They don't have to be five, but they should be at least five. All right. So uh, well, let's see what else do we got here. It's pretty simple. Nothing too crazy. Uh, in fact, under the camera manager, we're doing your typical exposure of one, response gamma LUT, and sRGB space. But there is one thing that we're doing slightly different, which is we've tweaked the white point to be a little bit blue to counteract some of the uh, tone mapping that uh, Octane does naturally. So if you want to match that, you're going to want to write down this number, this RGB value. This is what you'll want to set that white point to to match uh, what we've got here. Uh, other than that, there's really nothing else going on. Uh, obviously, if you are doing direct lighting, it's going to look a little bit different. But if you change it to direct lighting with uh, GI Diffuse, it will look pretty similar. Again, we recommend using full path tracing for extra beauty. So that is a quick rundown of the uh, render settings that uh, Leica Pro 3 is going to expect when using anything, any presets from our browser. So I'll see you in the next one. Okay, so in this video, I'm going to show you how to get the exact same look that we've got going on in the Light Kit Pro browser uh, with the render settings used in Redshift. So with Redshift as our renderer, I'm going to go ahead and open up our render settings and jump over to Redshift and make sure that we've got a few things checked on. Now, the sampling is totally up to you. The unified sampling is going to be up to you and how you want to set up your scene. The most important thing for us is that you actually make sure that you've got uh, at least two different secondary, primary and secondary. Uh, you want to make sure you, both of these are turned on. doesn't necessarily have to be brute force, brute, uh, radiance point cloud. It could be brute force, brute force. But the, mo the most important thing is you have at least three, but probably want to be five bounces of GI to make it look exactly like the images found in our browser. So again, this could be a radiance point cloud uh, as your secondary. It, it doesn't really matter. It's up to you. As long as there's about five bounces of GI, it would look really, really close. Uh, other than that, the unified sampling settings is all up to you. Uh, however you want to do that, to set that up to clean up your renders, we've got some tutorials on our website uh, regarding Redshift settings, so I recommend checking those out. Um, otherwise, yeah, I mean, that's about it. I'll see you in the next one. Okay, so for this video, I'm going to walk you through lighting this awesome brawn coffee maker. It's one of my favorite objects of all time, 1972 Aeromaster, actually. Uh, and we are going to just light this thing up from scratch using Light Kit Pro 3. And I think during this video, you're going to see how I use Light Kit Pro 3. You're also going to learn a lot about the different features. Now, there's tons of videos covering all the features. I highly recommend going and checking out all of them because there are so many features, it's sort of hard to name in one video. So, all right, we have our 
our scene, we have our generic, uh, we have no background. We've just got our generic default light on. Uh, we're running Redshift, but this doesn't mean that you couldn't do the exact same thing in Octane or Arnold or even physical. Um, but today we're using Redshift. Okay, so we need to create a background and that's when our psych is gonna come in. So these psychs are amazing. We have a ton of different psychs to choose from. I'm gonna start with an S curve and I'm gonna jump out into my perspective view and I'm just gonna quickly manipulate my psych to uh, sort of be what I want it to be. I'm going to create a little bit more of a slope here. I want that flat to sit right where the coffee maker is. And I'm going to make sure that my width is only as wide as I need it to be. So I could come in here and just do it like this, or I could come over to the uh, attributes and manipulate it here as well. Uh, I'm going to give it a bit more curve because I want that light to really sort of cascade up that wall to make it feel a little bit more seamless. I'm also going to push this up a little bit and maybe make the whole thing a little bit deeper. Okay, right about there. Let's go ahead and turn on the render view now and see how that looks. Uh, what's great too about the, the psych object is that we're gonna be able to choose a material for it right off the bat, just by going over to the psych material tab in the psych object. And all you have to do is tap whichever render that you're currently in, uh, and it's gonna load an 85% white material that you can manipulate. You're not locked to that by any means. So hit, hit the redshift uh, material. It's gonna automatically assign a nice white material to the uh, psych object, which it'll update here in the viewport. All right, so we've got our background set. Now now it's time to start adding some lights. Let's jump over here and get ready to add a light. All right, let's add first a softbox square, which is gonna immediately come in targeted at the center. Now this is, uh, right now we don't have any stand, so I'm gonna actually, we don't need a stand for this. I'm gonna turn off stand, and I'm going to manipulate the size. And the, the display mode that I like usually like to work in is constant shading, or I'll do a uh, quick shading. Uh, that's typically what I'm using when I'm using Redshift. All right, so let's just bring the, the height way, way up, and I'm going to rotate it down a little bit. I'm just, I'm just dragging the light. Oops, I, I do wanna add a little bit of roundness to that. I meant to grab this manipulator. And all I'm going to do is sort of walk it in and try to put this highlight exactly where I want it on the copy maker. Uh, right now, that seems to be right about here. That's feeling pretty good. I wanna make it a little bit wider. So I'm gonna come over to the width controls over my attributes and just change the width a little bit, maybe change the scale. I'm also going to change the rotation. You can do that all right here in the attribute editor too, which is really great. You can actually change the pitch if I wanna like raise it up just a little bit. That feels pretty good. I wanna just put this highlight in a nice cool place right on the edge here. Uh, let's open up our main tab and increase our master intensity to maybe like 200%. And now you can see this is where uh, Lightkit Pro becomes really, really fun because you can have this control that you just couldn't have uh, before. So the idea here of doing cast light versus reflected light means that I'm going to be able to throw more cast light, in this case 250%, more cast light into the shot. Uh, and I could lower or raise my reflected light, meaning the, the intensity of the reflection could get hotter or uh, lower based on this on this attribute here. So let's go ahead and give that like maybe 250% on that. And now we've got a nice bright highlight, maybe going a little bit higher on that reflected intensity. Good, and now I just wanna, I think I'm gonna make it a little bit wider. So I'm gonna make this like a 200, 200 units wide, just to widen out this highlight a little bit. That's looking pretty good to me. All right, so I'm gonna call this one my key. And we're gonna add another light. So I'm just gonna add another softbox square. And this time I'm going to put this one sort of on the opposite side. And I'm gonna do something interesting for this one. I'm actually going to do a POV placement on this one. So I'm gonna actually look through my light. So I'm actually able to, to look through my light like it's a camera and position that light accordingly. All right, that's pretty good. I'm just gonna hit that POV POV placement button again to jump back out. And now we've placed our highlight on the opposite side, but it is probably too, too tiny. I'm also gonna turn off my floor, or sorry, my mounts. And let's just manipulate this size a little bit. And I feel like that's pretty good. Maybe a little bit wider. Come in here, make it a little bit taller. All right, that's pretty good. I don't want that one to overpower my key, so I'm going to make it a little bit Got to make it a little bit skinnier. Looks cooler that way. And the rotation, I'm just going to rotate it back off of that surface. Maybe something more closer to the edge. Yes, that's actually feeling pretty good. Let's bring the overall intensity up. 
Good. I'm just blocking this out right now. Uh, I'm just blocking it out. We'll go in and fix a lot of these, uh, the, the ratio of key to fill and whatnot in a minute. All right. Now I'm going to add like an overall top light to this. So I'm going to do that with a softbox circle. And I know that I'm not going to need a mount on this as well. So I'm going to go ahead and turn that off. I'm going to bring my rotation all the way to uh, 360 and my pitch is going to be at 90. So it's going to sit right on top of everything. I'm going to hit T for scale. I'm going to scale this entire light up. So it's going to be a little bit more of a diffuse overall light. Uh, I need to see this light contributions of this light uh, soloed because I, I don't really know what it's doing overall. So the way that you do that with Leica Pro 3 is you're going to double click the icon and it's going to solo that light. So now I'm just looking at the contributions of this top light. So immediately I know I'm going to increase my master intensity. I probably also want to pitch it out a little bit, maybe a little bit more to kind of bring that highlight just over this curve a little bit. That's pretty good. Uh, let's also bring that intensity up again. Overall intensity up. That's feeling pretty good. It's sort of like our general fill. I'm going to double click that icon again to unisolate that light. And now we're seeing the contribution of all three. The softbox, um, this top light is still not quite big enough for my taste. So I'm just going to go a little bit bigger because I want that highlight to sort of kind of crawl over the entire top. This is looking pretty good. Now it's time to start working out our intensities. I think our key light, uh, our cast key light is probably a bit too intense in just the cast light. And I believe our top is actually a little dim. So I'm gonna actually increase the light I'm throwing out Oop, too bright. Don't want it to be too blown out. Something like in there feels pretty good. And our key light, we're just going to rename this guy top. And we're going to rename this one fill. And now we've got a really good simple three, three light setup uh, going here that we can manipulate. All right, so our key light looks pretty good. Um, let's jump into, let's just make sure, I'm just going to try to get Redshift to do a uh, original size. And let's go ahead and zoom in here. And let's actually just make this uh, frame all, I mean, control one. And let's just manipulate this. I'm just gonna draw a region right over this highlight because I want to art direct this highlight a little bit. Uh, so this key light, I'm just gonna isolate it, double click to isolate that light. I'm going to art direct this edge a little bit more. Uh, for my taste, I don't like the this hard edge to the actual light shape. So I'm gonna turn up the rounding, which you could do right here. Just go ahead and turn up that rounding. And that's gonna round out these corners a little bit. The other thing I'm gonna do is get a little bit more of a gradient happening. We've got a circular gradient on this light. So I'm just gonna darken this up a little bit this end gradient knot, maybe like in here. And this is just gonna give us a little bit more of a gradient. Now we could use the soft edge to bring a little bit more soft edge to that light fixture just by bringing this up to maybe like 15%. You're gonna see if we bring it up to like 60%, it's going to soften that edge of that highlight. Uh, I don't want a lot of that. So I'm gonna give it maybe just 10%. And I don't want to see so much of the imperfections. Right now, our imperfections are at 50, which are simulating those like wrinkles on the front of like a softbox. So I'm going to bring that down to like 10%. And I think my brightness, I could bring up to maybe 400%, on just the reflectivity. Great. Okay, cool. So let me just double click that light to get back out and see all the different lights. And I'm just going to region over this top part and really nail down what I want this top light to look like. Uh, this top light, I think, would be kind of cool to use a little bit more of that soft edge so that it feels more um, sort of like a softer highlight, not so much of a plasticky highlight or a hard edge highlight. This is going to make it feel a little bit uh, softer, I think, and not, not call so much attention out to itself. Uh, I need to change the size. I want this to be a bit bigger. I could come over here and scale it, or I could just come over to the radius and maybe type in 220 in the radius to make it a little bit bigger. Uh, that feels pretty good. Okay, so my, my fill light, I believe, is in good shape. I do think it needs to be a little bit dimmer. Uh, so let's just grab our fill and I don't want to, I don't want to change the cast light. I just want to make the reflection a little bit dimmer, maybe by a half. That's pretty good. 
and maybe it went too far maybe just to like 75 percent something like that feels pretty good okay so let's go jump back in here and sorry our ui is a little bit tight and let's turn off our region and there we go so um right away we're able to get really nice results uh, without a ton of of messing around and of course um, there are so many options and so many different ways that you could do this uh, with like a pro 3 this is just happens to be um, a way that i like to work with it um, oh i forgot to mention one interesting part is that we can start to start we can just quickly create some some color to these lights maybe we want our key light to be warm and our fill light, let's just say our top light is actually gonna be cool. So you can instantly start creating different color moods to this and maybe our, our fill light is also warm. So you can start to play around with different color temperatures and uh, we've got these quick selections here that make that very, very easy. Um, and then, yeah, so how else was, what else was I doing for this render? Well, um, to get a little bit more global light, another thing that I did was create a half dome uh, psych object and I pulled it down below everything and I went ahead and I made it pretty big. Let's see, let's just make this pretty big and we'll bring the height up to maybe like 1200, something like that. And let's also give it a material, a redshift material. So uh, let's just jump out of that camera so we can see what's going on here. So this is actually what we're, uh, what we're seeing uh, in our outside camera so we can sort of see all the lights working together. It looks pretty cool actually. It kind of, kind of looks a lot like um, just a, an interesting render on its own. All right, so let's just jump back into that camera. Let's just jump that camera and say lock. Uh, oops, let's just make sure we get out of that and back in here and lock that down. Oops, there we go. All right, so now this little ambient uh, half dome is bouncing a little bit light around and making things look a little bit more interesting. Uh, okay, so last light I wanna create is a little tiny little ping on maybe this corner right here. And I'm gonna do that with a softbox circle and we're gonna jump back out here and I'm going to do a POV placement on this one. Let's just go no mounts on that. We're gonna go POV placement and I am just going to put the light pretty far away and sort of aim it a little bit at that top part. And let's hit POB placement again. And I'm going to isolate this light so I can just see that light. And I'm going to bring its uh, reflectivity, its reflection intensity up to like pretty high, like 900 or something like that. Then I'm going to take my soft edge and move that to like 25%. What I'm doing is I'm creating a very tight little specular highlight. Uh, now I'm gonna start to use some of my more traditional rotation controls. So I'm gonna rotate this until I just find the right spot for it. Right about there and maybe a little bit more of a tilt up. I love these controls. These controls make, make this process like so much easier. Okay, so maybe we could bring the radius up a little bit. All right, cool. So now we've got that like tight ping type of highlight. Let's double click it to get back out and see the contribution overall. And maybe it could be even a little bit brighter. Yeah, that's pretty good. And then we'll just bring the size, maybe maybe we'll bring it back down just to make it more of like that pinged out highlight. So that's like a really easy way to create like a ping, a uh, highlight that just is like a really tight spot. Uh, okay, cool. So that's pretty much how I would approach the, this uh, type of shot. Um, and it's very close to what we ended up getting here. If we open up our, our picture viewer, this has a little bit of a color grade associated with it, but it's all the same principles that I just did right here for you using the psych object, the manipulation tools uh, of our light kit lights um, and a few uh, tricks with a double click solo and all that sort of thing. Uh, there's so many videos that cover all of these things in detail. So I highly recommend checking out all the videos that we've got covering Light Kit Pro 3 and I'll see you in the next video.